fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to talk about skis, skiing line, lift line, or anything like that. It's going to be, I should have put Crandall lifting line theory. And I'm going to, yeah. when I got into that, I thought, well, what happens if you do sweep and dihedral? So I'm going to try and get into that too. Um, my, the guy that started this all was back there, Al Bowers, when he started talking about uh, the flying wings and and proverse yaw. Well, how do you get the proverse yaw? If you, if you roll, you want the yaw to be in the same direction, not roll and then like that. So that's average yaw. So <clears throat> Al was an uh, inspiration for me to keep going on this stuff. And uh, as I got into it, I got uh, a book by Mark Villa, a very nice book. And he has a whole uh, appendix on lifting line theory. And so that was kind of my starting point to, to, to get going into this stuff. Um, let me see. Arrow? Something I didn't do, do anything. Up arrow or right arrow? I did, right? <laughs> there you okay. Go. okay. This is, uh, as I got into the <clears throat> trying to go from a straight wing to something that's uh, swept, uh, and I went through the whole thing. There's a big problem when the vortex is a kink, and I think Alec talked about that a little bit. And so I tried to smooth it out, making it into a hyperbola. And uh, so if you had a straight kink, it would go here and there. Oh, let me see. I got this. Yeah. So. Uh, this, this is the asymptotes for the hyperbola. So it, it comes down, and then this is a, a, a new parameter that I have for my hyperbolic uh, wing. Uh, it's this A parameter. So <clears throat> when I when I look at the when I take that um, uh, radial location of a point on the vortex, the vortex sheet, in fact, and and the bound vortex, then uh, I get that, and, and I did it in, in terms of a span-wise coordinate instead of uh, along the along the lifting line coordinate. And uh, I, I put too much stuff on here. Uh, so let's see what happens. <clears throat> so this is my bound vortex here with a little wing on it, and um, and the trailing vortex that goes back. And the, the training vortex is related to the bound vortex. But how is that? If you take this uh, line and you integrate along here, and then you integrate like that, and then you come back, and then you go on the bottom, and you come back around, that integration is zero. And so you get the bound vortex is uh, equal to this uh, integration along along this uh, transverse direction. And so when you, when you differentiate it, then it, you find that this, uh, this bound vortex, or this trailing vortex strength is related to the, how fast it gets shed off of the, the bound vortex. Okay. Good stuff. So <clears throat> what, what I want to find out is the forces and the moments on this down vortex. And this little force element here, uh, rho v gamma is nice, is for a straight little vortex uh, thing. And so when you integrate it over the, the over the bound, the whole bound vortex, then you get the components for drag, uh, side force, and lift. And make it into a, a coefficient form. Then I have uh, something like this. So what I want to know is what is the uh, uh, what is the bound vortex strength, and what is the velocity at the bound vortex? So they kind of they go together, uh, and so we're we're going to do a little balancing act and do a Fourier series analysis uh, or. Uh, representation of this and find out what the coefficients have to be to get everything nice and, and sweet.
This is the same thing for the, the moments. Here's a little vortex, a little force element, and you uh, take a moment about that, and you get your roll moment, your pitching moment, and your yaw moment. So in order to, <clears throat> in order to uh, find out uh, Prover's yaw, well, you got to do yaw. <laughs> so, so we're going to need to calculate this thing and, uh, and this thing. The, the roll moment and the yaw moment coefficients. Okay, so here's kind of the, the, the it gives you the, the velocity at a point knowing the bound vortex and the uh, vortex weight, shedding, uh, shedding vortex weight, and here's the free stream velocity. And uh, I had a a hard time deriving this, but you can derive it if you take some mathematics and you say curl, curl u, and multiply it by a Green's function and integrate over all space, it pops out. So <laughs> it's, it's not easy, but uh, uh, anyway, it, it's, it was fun to do. So here's the, the strength of the trailing vortex, here's the strength of the bound vortex, and uh, this part gives you, since you have a kind of a distorted uh, plan form, and, and uh, it's not Cartesian coordinates anymore, you need to have a, a Jacobian in there to figure that out. And so that was the velocity at any point. What I really want is the velocity at, on, the, on the bound vortex, because that goes into all the formulas, velocity at the bound vortex. And so taking this and uh, this, this little downstream coordinate, you can do that integral. It's, it's not that hard. It's, <laughs> you look it up in the, in the book, and, and what you get is this. And uh, when you have uh, a bound vortex and <coughs> a trailing vortex that are perpendicular, this whole term drops out, and you come back to uh, uh, classical uh, Prandtl uh, things, but I want to be able to do it. I can't do it an analytically; it's just too hard. Uh, but I can do it numerically, and there are problems when this equals that, it blows up. And so, what I did was the, the, the principal value of this integral is blowing up. But if you integrate up to where the, the singularity is, and then you start on the other side of the singularity and, and go to, you can do it numerically. And uh, I'll show you the results on that. Um, OK. So now we're going to get into how, what do we do about this uh, bound vortex? Uh, we we want to expand it as a power series or Fourier series in sign because sine of zero and sine of pi are equal to zero, so that's the form that you want. There are no cosines in there. Um, but th this angle is, is here. You, 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 take, you take the cosine of, the, of this angle, and uh, you can transform the, the, the derivatives, or, or the in integrals, into integrals on theta instead of integrals on y. And so the, the derivative, you want the derivative with respect to y, but you have to put an extra sign in there. OK, so if you do that for a classical lifting line theory, and you say, OK, no sweep, no dihedral, just straight wing. Oh, I forgot to say that on the uh, on the previous on the uh, slide for the velocity at any point. If you have a straight line uh, vortex instead of turn, then this one doesn't affect that one. It it's just the the, the cross product is zero when you do that uh, the math. But when you have a when you have a, a dihedral or sweep then this wing, or 
affects that one and vice versa. So it, it makes it a little harder because you get extra, a whole, whole extra turn. Anyway, when you, when you go through, uh, I, I said, what's, what is the velocity on the point, on the, on the uh, board bound vortex? This is what you get. Uh, this, this, and this. They're the same thing, except one is for uh, inside the, the wingtips, and one is for the outside the wingtips. So this one is outside, and sure enough, this integral is in the in the textbook or in in the Gradstein and Rizik, uh, uh book of integrals, and and it's this. It's not exactly that, but when you rearrange it, you get this. And uh, I'll show you a graph of what that looks like too. And when you're when you're on from, from wingtip to wingtip, and you do this uh, this integral, you get a problem because there's a singularity here, and you have to go into a little higher math. But it comes out simple. Uh, this this sine wave uh, kind of distribution. Okay. So this is. This is what you get for the analytical result, and this is what you get for the numerical result. So I felt good about that when it got popped out. And this, this line right here, that's the Prandtl constant velocity, the downwash velocity. And then, but, but it doesn't talk about this part, the, the upwash velocity outside that. So, we have all these modes of, uh, of, uh, of vertical velocity, but I don't like singularities like this. <laughs> so I try to sum, a, sum these uh, uh, solutions so that they all add up and you get a nice smooth, uh, smooth velocity distribution. Um, the, I want the, the velocity and the slope of the, veloc of the velocity to be cons continuous over this uh, singularity region. I don't know if... Oh, okay, this, <coughs> this is the same uh, calculation, but now I put sweep and dihedral in it. And the, the modes change all over the place. But, Okay, I can do the modes, now how do I add them up? That I kind of is a work in progress, so. And the same for the, for the asymmetric modes. Okay, the, the, the bound vortex, with my little hyperbola smoothing, uh, gives me this kind of uh, distribution for the, the four different modes. And uh, I'm, I'm still working on that too. So. <laughs> uh, but I haven't seen this before, so. Uh, okay, here's, here's kind of my contribution to this thing. Uh, you have a, an outer, outer velocity at the, on the uh, bound vortex, and you have an inner velocity. And okay, I want these two to be the same, to be continuous. It's, instead of this thing blowing up, if this thing blows up, that's that's bad because here's the right solution: m m squared a. So in order for this to be zero, this m times a has to be zero. So uh, uh, okay, m yeah m times a the summation has to be equal to zero. And the similar thing for the slope uh, of the outer part and the inner part, uh, it's it, a little bit complicated, but this is even more complicated. The m part is gonna uh, go away, but this is an m cubed that term that needs to uh, be taken care of. So m cubed times a, the summation of those guys needs to be cost, or, uh, equal to zero so that we get continuous slope. Okay, so we got we got slope and uh, we got the magnitude of the velocity and the slope at the at this point uh, 
being continuous. Uh, here, my good friend Ludwig Prandtl talked about a wing weight parameter, so that if you, uh, if the local wing weight is proportional to the local bending moment, then okay, we integrate it, and that's going to be proportional to the, the wing weight, the total wing weight. But you can do that integral, and you get the coefficients of my uh, bound vortex, a plus a1 plus a3, uh, pops right out. And so that's going to be my wing weight parameter. And so, um, so now I have four, I have three terms. I want to solve for the coefficients a1 to a7, but uh, I'm normalizing it with respect to the first coefficient. So if uh, here's the first coefficient is going to be one. Okay. The second coefficient is a1 plus a3 equals to this parameter. And this is the m1 times a equals 0, and m3, m cubed times a equals 0. And when you do that, you get coefficients like this. So here's a, it's like a, a knob I can twist. This, if I change this wing weight parameter, I, I can make it go less or more weight on the, on the wing. And, uh, and see what happens. And we'll, what we want to do is look at the yaw moment coefficient and twist that thing until it's zero, and that's going to be a, a good parameter. Okay. So here are, are my coefficients. If you, uh, this is the lift coefficient term. The drag coefficient has two, two terms, one for the even coefficients and one for the odd coefficients. Here's the, the yaw moment coefficient, and here's the normal, uh, the yaw, no, this is the, the roll moment coefficient, and this is the yaw moment coefficient. Uh, and I was going to go through these things one at a time. Uh, when, when, you, when you put in the, the, power seri or the Fourier series expansion of this, only the first term comes out. And so the first term is equal to the lift over pi a. That, that looks familiar, doesn't it? This coefficient over pi times aspect ratio, where the aspect ratio is b squared over s. And here's the lift coefficient. Okay. Rolling moment coefficient is similar, except now it's uh, the sine of 2 theta term pops out. All the other terms uh, cancel out each other, but this, if, this, if m is equal to 2, then this uh, integral is uh, non-zero. And so uh, the, the coefficient for this, this a2 coefficient is uh, the roll moment coefficient divided by my aspect ratio. Um, the induced drag term you got two terms. You got the, the, the velocity, the vertical velocity, and the uh, uh, or the circulation function. And you, and there's two terms. There's if this is odd and that's odd, then you get a contribution. If this is even and that's even, you get another contribution. So here's the the odd terms, and here's the even terms. So the, it's the this uh, lift coefficient squared over pi aspect ratio, all this stuff is going to be like your span efficiency factor. Uh, the first term is 1, but then there's a 1 plus delta, and if you see it that way, or 1 over, epsilon, or one over e. Uh, and I haven't really seen this term before, but I hope it's there. <laughs> Okay, this is a similar thing for the yawn moment coefficient. Changing nomenclature, <laughs> I, I was doing it in terms of y, and uh, this, this is the old version that went along the, uh, the bound vortex, to integrate along the vortex. But uh, you, when you do that and you get a whole bunch of terms, and the first two terms are 
there's a three and there's a five. And so if my, uh, my third coefficient, A3, divided by A1 is going to be <coughs> less than three-fifths, then my, my coefficient has to be less than two-fifths. And so uh, compared to one, one would be for elliptical load distribution. So it's uh, you get a much uh, lighter weight by, by doing this. Okay. And here's my BSLV. I always wonder what BS stood for. But <laughs> 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 it's it's uh, uh, anyway. It goes down and levels out at the wingtips and the maximum here, and it's kind of pretty pointy for this uh, uh, lambda equals two fifths. If you want, that's that's for the yaw coefficient equal to zero. If you want, so that uh, you you yaw in the same direction as you uh, as you roll, then it has to be pointier. I think it has to be pointier. Okay. Okay. So here, at, at the wing tips here and here, ah, wing here and here, I have the velocity and the slope continuous. And so the maximum of the it's up wash here is inside the the wing tip and it goes down and back up. So the outside, outside the wing tip, there's upwash, a little bit of upwash, but it's peak right here. That's where the pelicans want to fly. So. Um, okay, so <clears throat> now I want to figure out what, what kind of twist distribution do you need if you put in a, a rectangular wing or something like that, because the the, that bound, uh, that uh, vortex strength is really a lift co is is really CCL. Here's here's that non-dimensionalized lift co or uh, power loading coefficient. Okay. Uh, so you can, if you put it in different uh, plan forms, you get different distributions. So if you want a constant distribution, this gives you your plan form distribution. If you want a nice square rectangular wing, then you have to modify what kind of lift distribution you're going to get. And the lift dif distribution has some kind of uh, geometric angle of attack, and the downwash that, uh, of course, that uh, you need. So when you solve for this uh, uh, angle of attack for the geometry of the twist, um, then you get something like this. And when you, okay, so I tried doing it for some kind of uh, aspect ratio 20 something and uh, with, a, a lift district for, with a plan form distribution like that and it has taper ratio. And what you get is, okay, th this is the lift distribution. And you, you look at that and, and you say, well, wait a minute, I can't do a lift coefficient above uh, 1.2, 1, 1. say. So then you have to uh, bring down your, your whole uh, airplane lift coefficient so that, uh, so that you can take this maximum. So if you, take, uh, if you take lift coefficient equal to 1, so you can bring this down to 1, then uh, that's the local lift coefficient coefficient, then the overall lift coefficient has to be, you know, 0.5 or something. And then when you do the, that lift, that, that twist distribution formula, uh, you get something like this. So you get, uh, like, 10 degree difference between here and here. Don, is this irrespective of airfoil? Uh, well, the airfoil is going to tell you what kind of lift coefficient you're able to choose. 
No, I mean, as far as the dis distribution. The distribution is, is just lifting my theory. In order to make it into a real airplane, you have to choose the airfoil that says, um, well, my, my, and, and another, the other thing I did was I said the lift slope curve was too high. Okay, maybe you have a different uh, airfoil that has slightly less than that, because that's the, the maximum that uh, theoretical came up with. Um, I don't know, I think that's it. I was just going to say, this is the book Al was talking about. <laughs> uh, I did when I was 39 years old, and I'm 78 now. <laughs> and this is a, a set of uh, uh, articles that I wrote for Kipling magazine long ago. And uh, I said, well, I put them all together. It looks like a book, so it's a book. Uh, uh, in the next one, hangar? Hmm? They're really the next They're in the next hangar. This, this, uh, you can do a preliminary calculation with a pencil and a straight edge in 15 minutes. So, without computer, without anything, my nomograms uh, save the day. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, I've sold about 15,000 of them, so people like it. Anyway, if there, you have some questions, or uh, do I need to go back and, and See you something, or are we done? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get all of them? You notice birds don't have any sweep so on the inboard section. Like They're flat straight flat. through the middle. You do. The outboard and section is swept. Because it gives you a zero the inboard section is straight. But you have straight. to take into account. So G G I figured this out a long time ago. From from the <laughs> this is all an aerodynamic twist. I still have some work to do on the, the sweep and yaw part, but I, I made some progress so that it, uh, uh, I can get the solution, the, the modal solution, you know, to put them together. Because again, when you when you have sweep, now you have instead of just being a, a universe or a, a free stream velocity on the on the uh, bound vortex you have an induced velocity on there too so it's not clear how those lift co or those coefficients uh, hand themselves out Don, I'd, I'd suggest that you you really ought to put in some graphs and then what they mean physically, so the guys that are lower down can get them better. <laughs> so that's what I found I had to do in my book, mm -hmm. was, you know, tell them what, what they needed to know mm -hmm. to pick out. Well, I just did this for Al. Al <laughs> 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 well, the graphs. <laughs> You read green. Well, I, I thought I heard him say he hired a whole bunch of kids. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, this math is the only language I speak right now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Don. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Don. Thank you.